First Corinthians chapter 5, a continuation of our studies, uh, uh, the studies of the book of uh, First Corinthians that started some days ago. So today we'll be taking um, the, um, chapter 5 of that particular book, First Corinthians. But before we uh, move on to today's um, study, we want to do a recap of the previous study, what we studied yesterday. And I hope you've gone over it with you studied yesterday and uh, what you learned from there so let's quickly look at uh, a recap of ch chapter four we in chapter four what we learned i titled it um, servants of god okay we are servants of jesus christ and managers of god's minute uh, god's mysteries servants of jesus christ we are managers of god's mysteries therefore it is expected of us to be found faithful by our master okay we also learned that the world may have um, a lot of um, um, a, uh, the, the world may have a lot of issues of, of uh, or different opinions uh, about us, but it doesn't matter the opinion that God has about you because we are the ones that um, we, we, we are the ones that He has chosen, and we are also going to give account of our stewardship unto Him. So the world may hate you or hate me, or the world may also applaud us. But the one who we eventually evaluate our assignment, evaluate our work, okay, is the Lord who called us and who appointed us as managers. Praise the Lord. So it therefore doesn't matter what anyone says about us as servants of Christ. Either they are showing accolades on us or they are ridiculing us. It doesn't matter. God will surely, at the end of the day, reveal, it will expose and bring to light all that we have done in secret. Okay, either we've done good or we've done bad. Only the Lord can reveal them and we surely reveal them. We reveal everything we've done in secret and uh, all the intentions of our hearts while we were working for him as a steward. Praise God. A servant of God, we also learned that a servant of God and manager of God's people must not be inflated with pride, must not be inflated with pride I must not feel superior to those he or she is leading, okay, in order to, uh, you know, make them feel, you know, belittle to them, okay, we must not uh, inflate ourselves with pride. Servants of God are meant to use the gift that they have, the gift of knowledge, the gift of uh, prophecy, whatever, whatever gift that we have received, we are to use those gifts to build up. The body of Christ, because it is God that has given us those gifts. So it's not in our place to begin to glory, and to begin to gloat, and to begin to get uh, big-headed over the gifts that we have. Praise the Lord, because no matter how much gifts we have, or how um, spiritually inclined that we think we are, God enough has actually equipped us. Praise the Lord. We didn't equip ourselves; He equipped us with those gifts. For, his, for the purpose of the kingdom, for his own purpose. Also, we learn also that no matter how financially buoyant we have become, even as servants of God, we must remain humble because we are servants and the financial benefits or financial uh, uh, benefits or increase that we see or our wealth are for the work of the kingdom. They are not for, they are not our gain actually. They are for the work of of the kingdom our gain and our reward you know we'll get that whatever it is that he has given to us right now is also for the work of the kingdom praise the lord hallelujah so it is not in our place to begin to flaunt okay wealth and flaunt whatever we have for god has given us everything that we have or that we think that we own for the uh, benefits of the kingdom for the expansion of the kingdom in here is kingdom here on earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are now going to move on to we'll be moving. We are we'll be moving we'll now be moving on to uh chapter three, uh, chapter five now, which is our text. Okay, so let's <clears throat> continue. Um First Corinthians chapter five. We've just done a recap of chapter four. That was 
today. Before we um, go to understanding, because without the understanding, all we are learning, all that we think that we are, we are learning, we just be in vain. Without the understanding, the letter destroys, the letter cannot mean anything to us. So many people are reading the Bible and they do not have the understanding. So many people are studying the Bible, reading the Bible, and, and yet they are in sin because they lack understanding. So we're going to talk to the Holy Spirit. Why don't you just talk to the Holy Spirit? We thank you for being our teacher this morning, and we ask that you will give us understanding of your word, even as you teach in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes, O Lord, that we may behold new things from your word this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. We specifically ask you individually that you will please, O Lord, grant us understanding. Give us insight in the word as you teach us this morning. That we may, that are, amen. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, today's um, scripture that we are studying is First Corinthians chapter 5. And I titled this Immoral, uh, Immorality in the Church. Immorality in the Church. If you agree with me, you and I know if you're a believer. Okay, because this study, Bible study is actually for believers. Okay, if you, you will agree with me that there is so much immorality in the church. And and the more we study, the more we will be able to flee from all this. Uh, yeah, move according to the actually work with him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the immoral, immorality in the church, chapter 5, is widely reported that there is sexual immorality amongst you and the don't amongst unbelievers. Amongst un unbelievers is what we see in the church today. A man is living with his father's wife and you are inflated with pride. Such a person is inflated with pride. Instead of being filled with grief, so that he who has committed this act might be removed from amongst you. For I have already decided about him who has done this thing, as though I were present. Okay, I was also writing to them from what he has heard that a particular person did. This was even a particular person that did this in the church. Today we have, we have thousands of people, okay, doing such things, okay. Sleeping, a man sleeping with their with their daughters, and all kinds of things happening in the church. And he said, "Person, because the person must be removed. For he who has committed this act might be removed from amongst you. For though absent his body, but present his spirit, I've already decided about him who has done this thing, as though I were present. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and you." Are flesh so that the spirit may be saved. I wrote to you in a letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. By no means referring to the this was immoral people. So we're talking about immorality as believers. We're not believers. we're talking about ourselves now. To the greedy and and uh, swindlers or to idolaters otherwise you will have to leave this world. Okay we know that these things happen in the world but it shouldn't be happening in the church. But now I am writing you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of a brother, the names of who bears the name of brother or sister, who is sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater or a reviler, a drunkard or a swindler. Is it to me to judge outsiders? How can we be judging outsiders? Outsiders when we are doing the same. God will judge the outsiders. Put away the evil. Uh, yes, a lot of revelations. Uh, you know, a lot of us look at um, unbelievers and we say, oh, they are this, they are that. We actually do not have any business judging unbelievers. Let God judge them. But let's look at what we are doing by ourselves. Uh, what Christians are doing. Okay. Even you that you are judging, ask yourself, what am I doing? That is actually bringing disgrace, bringing shame, bringing reproach to in the church certain things are happening praise the lord hallelujah amen so what the, the scripture is saying is that sexual immorality is being condoned daily in the church 
We have fathers sleeping with their daughters. We have uh, sons sleeping with their uh, with their mothers or with their father, with their stepmothers. We have pastors sleeping with church members or or sleeping with members' uh, wives. All kinds of things happening. It is such abominable acts must be removed from the church because these are terrible things happening. They must be removed from the church and they must be severely disciplined until they repent. That is if they want to repent, if they are willing to change. If they are not as communicated from the church, they are the ones who end up polluting others. So, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, they, they justify their actions in the church whom they are also looking up to they see them as such a malign the name of christ they are the ones who end up policing others so believers must do away with such people also as believers we also need to do away with our old habits some of these people who do this in the church is because they are um they, they have this this habit okay the habit of of sexual immorality they still think that they can live the old life with a new life of course it will not work they do not have a new life anyway because if you come with your old habits there's no way you can imbibe new habits okay the old habit is the one that you will continue with that means you have not even died to yourself you did not die to your old self so so many people in the church today who have not died to their old self so they have brought their old life uh, their old self the old man in them into the church and such people will never change her. And they will continue with their own of Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so it's not possible to live two lives together. You can't say you're a Christian and you're living both the old life and the new life together. It's not possible because they cannot blend. So believers who still live, they will do anything for power, do anything for money, do anything for fame. We do not have any business judging unbelievers if we have such people in our midst and if we cannot judge them, okay? We must be able to judge ourselves. We can people who are evil, people who are uh, that some abyss that are brought into the Christian dorm and, you know, I'm trying to with me and uh, let's discuss all this happening in the church and how people can actually change and imbibe the new habits, the habits of Christ, imbibe the new a way of living as Christians. Amen. Father, we thank you for all that you have taught again today, for opening our eyes to your word. Yes, we know so many of these to know that we can that we must actually disassociate ourselves uh, from such people who are polluting the church and who are polluting us so that um, so many people will not join them. We must excommunicate them. We must bring them 